Stretching Space with Transformation Optics. This video will be our first simple application of transformation optics to potentially do something useful. Here's the setup for the problem. We have a starting coordinate system and we're defining the direction of a wave or it could be a field line. We would like to, in the middle of that, somehow stretch space. And in the end, we'd like to be back in our ordinary coordinate systems, but come up with what material system would effectively stretch space, even though physically the space is not stretched, but electrically it would appear as if it is. So the first thing we do is define our coordinate transform. And we would like to stretch, in this case, the Z axis by a factor of A. Now, this might be a little bit backwards from what you're thinking, but we would like to end in standard sort of X, Y, Z coordinates. That means we would actually want to start with a deformed space. Well, in order to stretch going from left to right, we would actually need to start off with a more compressed space to begin with. And so that's why our coordinate transform is defined this way. We're actually compressing our z-axis, our untransformed z-axis, to get to the transformed axis. So anyway, we define our coordinate transform that way. So we're not touching x and y, but we would like to stretch z. Well, we know we need to construct the Jacobian now. Here's how our Jacobian is defined. The first thing we do is we differentiate x prime with respect to x. That gives us a one. Well, since x prime equals x, any other derivative or with respect to any other variable y or z just gives us zeros. y prime equals y. So we only have a derivative, anything other than zero at the center position. Derivative of y prime with respect to y is one. With respect to any other variable, we get zero. And then last, finally, we have the derivative of z prime with respect to x, y, and z. Well, it's only a function of z, so we have zeros in the x and y positions. But in the last position, we have 1 over a. So we have a very simple Jacobian. We now transform our permeability and permittivity. And these are the equations we're using to do that. And so we have our Jacobian. We have the transform of the Jacobian. Since our Jacobian is a diagonal matrix, in fact, the Jacobian equals the transpose of the Jacobian. We have no terms in the off diagonals. So actually we have all diagonal matrices here. The determinant of our Jacobian ends up just being one over A. And in the end, we end up with a permeability tensor that looks like this. And we have really the same looking permittivity tensor. Let's look at those in a bit more detail. So what does this mean? Well, right away, we see that we have two directions that have the same permittivity and permeability and a third one that is different. Whenever that happens, we call this uniaxial. Even more, we see that this third direction is less than, has a lower value than these other two directions, assuming A is greater than one. So in fact, this would be a negative uniaxial medium that would realize this space stretching. So how do we do that with a metamaterial? Well, we do it with alternating layers of different material. So in this case, we have some kind of dielectric air, dielectric air, dielectric. Now in principle, we need to change permittivity and permeability together in these alternating layers. I'm really just showing it here with permittivity. And if we were to do it with permittivity, in principle, we would still be stretching space. In this case, the stretch factor with a permittivity only metamaterial would be the square root of the ordinary permittivity divided by the extraordinary. So the ordinary is the permittivity in the two directions that are equal, and the extraordinary is in the direction that is less than the other two directions. And we sort of have an average effective permittivity. It's the geometric mean of the ordinary and extraordinary permittivity. 
So that's one way we could realize this with a meta material. Just alternating layers of dielectric are effectively stretching space. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.